part two of the steering wheel. I'm pressed for time right now, so we'll get right to it. Here's our stuff from last night. This epoxy actually sort of swells, and I read the literature. I think it's like 2% to 3% it swells. So I tried to leave it low. I got a little high right here. So I'll probably scrape all this down. I'll sand it just a little bit to give it some tooth so the next lift has something to stick to. So there we go. That's it. We'll sand it probably with not 80 grit this time, but probably with 180 because I don't want to screw anything up around it too bad and uh, we'll move from there so I'll grab my sandpaper there we go sorry about the glare guys I'm trying to get an angle that'll look right but this is shiny plastic stuff so anyway, there it is, all sanded down, got in the groove, sanded it down. We'll blow it off with some air and we'll clean it up with some something or other, either thinner or alcohol or something, to give us a nice surface to bond to. Got a little lacquer thinner, just getting everything cleaned up, getting all the dust off of her. Make sure we have a good bonding surface for the epoxy. Again, we're going to hit this with the Scotch Weld. And uh, I think this was 1838 is the name of this one. I use the green. There's also a tan. And I think there's a clear too if you want to go clear. And they actually do mix sort of different uh, in that uh, by weight and by volume they're a little different, which is kind of weird. But uh, anyhow, this is what we're using the green. I like the green. For some reason, I can see it real well when it's stirred up, and uh, I think they all have the same properties. Somebody asked me what the difference between this stuff and like a JB Weld is, and uh, I don't know. You can get online and take a look at, I think it's like the MSDS sheets or the product data sheet, and you can see the properties, you know, so like the tensile strength, the shear strength, and that sort of thing. This is considered a structural epoxy, um, which is a high strength. Now, I don't know if JB Weld is. I don't know much about JB Weld. I've always just kind of used this stuff because it works. And, uh, you know, JB Weld is probably just as good. I've seen people use something, I think it's called Power Putty or something like that. And it's like a two-part, it's a gray putty that actually comes in a can. Uh, people have used that. You just want something that's going to be really hard over time and that can actually withstand some temperature change because, of course, you know, if you're out at a car show on some black asphalt, this stuff might be, you know, if it's black here on the steering wheel, you might be talking, you know, 150 degrees plus or minus. Uh, if you're out in Arizona or somewhere, it might be even more down in Florida. It might be more. You know, if the air temperature is 100 and the sun's beating down through a windshield, and these things get really hot, so it needs to hold up even even under pretty severe temperature. So uh, this stuff is is intended for that type of use. So that's why I use it, or at least that you know the product data sheet will tell you. You know, that it can be used that way. And this also, different epoxies work on different things. I don't know what makes one different from the other, uh, chemically or otherwise, but uh, this one says it can be used on aluminum, mi uh, mild steel, rubber, and plast some plastics. So um, I'm hoping that this is one of the plastics it can be used on. I've uh, not had it fail on a plastic yet in my life. I've been using this stuff for probably 20 years or so on different projects and uh, had excellent luck with it. That's why I use it. Uh, it's one of those, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. Or if it is broken, oh man, you guys aren't catching any of this. I'm sorry. If it is broken, fix it with this stuff. 
I took a look at this other wheel and it's got kind of the same problem. Uh, there's one little stud that's left, three that are gone, and I actually, there were three on it, and then uh, you know, I kind of wiggled on them and they were already broken, so it wasn't like something I could just pop off and pop on. So I dropped a little epoxy underneath all of the studs there and just kind of clamped them up. We'll see if they stick. Uh, I didn't really clean up those studs at all. I just popped the epoxy on there. We'll see if it sticks. If not, uh, I'll probably pull it apart and do something else. We'll see. I don't know if you guys can tell it or not, but this stuff flows out pretty good. It gets kind of shiny. Uh, anyway, we'll be sanding that down. And uh, take these clips off here. It looks like that epoxy stuck. So... I think that's going to be the repair for those little post guys right there. I don't know if we'll need to do anything more to those or not, but uh, it feels like it's stuck. So if it unsticks, we'll do something else with it. But till then, we'll let it ride, and then uh, we'll sand on this epoxy a little bit. And this should it should get us where we want to go. It feels like everything's high, and that's where we want it to be, just a little bit high. And we'll sand it all down. And I'm not sure how I'm going to cover this steering wheel yet. There's kind of two schools of thought here. One is I have a black interior or a black dash. So let's take a look. All right? You guys, maybe not everybody has seen this, but we got a black dash. I got some white pieces kind of coming in, but the seats are going to be light colored, and so is the convertible top. So the convertible top is actually a beige. Uh, Hearts Stay Fast Canvas, which is the German canvas stuff, and then I've got some samples on the way of some tweeds. Uh, I think I asked for three different samples for tweed, so we're going to have a combination of vinyl and tweed, and I may have a couple different colors involved, but these will be light here in the seats, so I need to make the transition from kind of light colored interior to black dash. Oh, and the carpet is going to be a light color as well, uh, beige I think is what they call it. It'll be a, oh, it's not the German square weave because I can't afford that, but it's a, it's an American wannabe and it kind of has a loop to it. I think it's just called loop pile. It's pretty nice looking stuff. I think they've got a beige as well or an oatmeal or something like that. So anyway, uh, back to the steering wheel. I think I'm going to keep the center of the wheel black. So hang on. Got to be careful here so I don't break the little plastic bits. This guy actually cleaned up pretty well. Um, so let's just very easily here throw that in there. So the center of this is going to stay black, but I may wrap here and here in white, but that may require me to sew on some black for here and here and uh, sort of make a black inset. I've seen steering wheels like that where they you know, kind of handle it in pieces and parts. So we'll see. Uh, it's going to take me some time to figure that out, and that probably won't happen right away. I've got a, uh, is this a 3M? Yeah, a 3M stick it pad, which is the ones that are cut for a DA. I don't know if you guys can see that. It takes DA paper, like the 6 inch DA paper. But it's kind of foamy and flexible, but it has these rounded ends to it. And I've been using them to kind of get in the grooves here. And uh, just so everybody realizes what kind of time this takes, uh, I've been sanding for over an hour tonight. Uh, just on these little things because uh, hang on, I got paper stuck to my arm. I uh, could do without that. Um, when you're doing a repair like this, there's no room. There's no room for error. You don't get a skim coat. You don't get whatever. You get the epoxy and the steering wheel. And if they don't match up, they don't match up. So, you know, I don't want to be able to see this paint through, uh, or I don't want to be able to see dips and dives through the paint. I want it to be perfect. And uh, oh, I got a little paint stick here, you know, a little paint stick with some 180. Uh, 
you know, I want it to be perfect. I don't want it to look like there's a crack under there. So you have to constantly use your fingers and, you know, don't use your eyes because your eyes will tell you that it's level. You got to use your fingers and feel it and feel every little bit and then close your eyes and run your hands around the steering wheel and see if you can identify where those cracks are. And if you can, that means they're not level. And if they're not level, you have to have the discipline to go back and continue sanding. Let's talk about paint real quick. Anytime I'm going to paint an oddball part like this one, uh, I like to get into the technical reference manual here and find out what we're supposed to do. So my first gut feeling was I needed to put a sealer on here and then just top coat it because uh, I don't need to fill anything. We're just going to seal and go. So I hop under primers, which is the number two here. So there it is, primer sealer. And I'm looking, 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 and I'm thinking I need a flex additive uh, or painting flexible parts. And I look here and it says painting flexible parts. No, don't do it. So uh, I, this isn't terribly flexible, but it's made of that same kind of material. Unprimed plastic replacement parts, which if we just go with plastic parts, uh, this will apply. Uh, we put some adhesion promoter on uh, the part. So I'm going to use Bulldog for that. Then we're going to use an MP epoxy as a sealer with a uh, MAV420, which is an activator on the... Uh, on the flexible parts so that's what we're going to use on here we're going to use an epoxy with a 420 activator and if you go back 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 we flip in here and we go painting flexible parts it says yep we can paint paint flexible parts just says the exact same thing got to use that MAV 420 which we have on the shelf so that's how we're gonna prime this baby and uh, I'm not sure if we're gonna top coat this or not right now but we are going to put it in primer just to make sure all the all the epoxy work is good, you know. We're going to use this right here. We're going to use a gray 480 and uh, the MAV 420 on the activator side of things. So uh, Darren Brady from another option body and paint supply dot com is a good friend of mine. He knows all about this stuff. I don't uh, particularly have a lot of experience with the plastic parts, but if you have any question with painting plastic parts or uh, matrix, epoxy, uh, etch primers, painting metal, all those things, you can talk to Darren. He's re very accessible, uh, and uh, he sent me out this book, and he's helped me understand how to use these products uh, over time. I'm going to clean up the steering wheel, give it a little scuff. We've got our Comet. We've got our gray scotch bright. We're just going to give this a scuff. Sorry, I don't have my tripod out here today. But uh, we'll put a little water on here, give it a little scuff scuff, and then uh, it should be ready for some adhesion promoter, then epoxy, then uh, some paint. So we're going to use the bulldog. We're going to squirt it all down. It takes two coats. We're going to go really, really light on both coats, and then it'll be time to paint. We've got the wheel in primer right now. This is actually a black primer. I think I showed you a gray one on camera. This is black. They make it in all different kinds of colors, but this is epoxy on there. So uh, I'm going to put another coat of epoxy, and then we'll move into the paint. There she is, three coats of clear. Sorry about the lighting. Let's see if we can get around here in the sun. Yeah, there we go. Three coats of clear on that bad boy. Uh, all the repair areas came out real nice I uh, I can't identify where the cracks were which is kind of what we were going for the only thing is I probably over sanded just a little bit I'm gonna try and point from up here right there there's a little bit of a flat spot in there and uh, I think I was having trouble with a pinhole right there but I have the uh, center button guy and this clear is still real wet but it's a shiny clear so it's gonna be real shiny the last article that I'm going to worry about are the springs that go underneath the horn button. And these were really rusty, and it doesn't really matter that they were rusty uh, from a performance standpoint or anything else, but what does matter is rust stinks. And I don't mean that metaphorically. I mean it smells. Uh, you can smell rust. If you go up to a rusty piece of metal, take a whiff of it, it stinks. 
Um, so I've been trying to eliminate those little rusty things. The same with the springs on your seats, stuff like that. You should always sandblast them and recoat them, because otherwise they make your car smell funny when it heats up, believe it or not. So I'm going to give these guys a quick coat of rattle can uh, etch, and then rattle can black or something, whatever I've got sitting around. So no big deal on these, and then we'll put her all together. Sorry about the light, guys. I'm trying to show you some detail here, but boy, she's really shiny. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a little too shiny for my liking, but that's the way it goes. It's base coat, clear coat. It looks really nice. Uh, so there it is. We're all installed and uh, ready to go. Don't, Don't let, let your meat low. That was weak. Try it again. <laughs> <laughs> again. Again. This ain't sign language. Again. Don't do that. Me. All right, ready? Right. Here we go. Right, you ready? Right. One, two, three. Don't let your meat low. 